Hi, my friends. How are you today? Beautiful summer day. I want to talk to you today about my favorite subject, and that is the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, uh, we can simply be in the Spirit and we can't be led. He leads us. The Holy Spirit leads us every day. What God wants us to, to do every day. The people he wants us to come in contact with every day. He leads us. He points at Jesus for us. And the Holy Spirit is the one that is giving us the anointing. When the anointing flows, the Bible says in Isaiah... Uh, 10 that uh, it's a yoke destroying anointing when anointing is in the room the the yokes are being destroyed um so i love to be led by the holy spirit i wake up every day and i'm very excited about what god is going to show me every day i am because I know he has something for me. Um, I want to read. Let's go to Acts. Book of Acts. Famous chapter. I'm going to read the chapter now. Because I believe, you know, um, the same thing that happened in... Um, Pentecostal day is the same thing that happened at Azusa Street Revival in Bonnie Brea House. You remember that revival? For 111, 12, 112 years ago. And it's the same principle when you look at it a little closer how the Holy Spirit fell. It's unity. It's unity. It's sharing your life and be one in the body of Christ and be devoted and wholehearted in prayer. And hold on. The old prayer ladies, when I was a kid, they were praying through. They didn't stop, just pray one night and then go home. They prayed certain things through. And I believe God wants us to pray through what's going on in this world right now. All the stuff that's coming against us that is so dark and we look at it and many people can see what it is. But it doesn't stop there because it's not enough to see it. We need to work. Bible says work while it's day. When it's night, it's too late. The night on this planet is going to be so dark and we are not going to be here. We're not going to be, we're not going to participate in that darkness that's going to be on this planet. But now it is sort of day for us so we can work in the spirit. That means to plow through prayer, to intercede, to do warfare, to bind and to loose and to stand on his promises and be united and live in purity and, and, and totally devotion to him. That's when the power hits. I'm going to show it to you. Go with me to Acts 2. Um, I read it from the Passion Translation. On the day Pentecost was being fulfilled, all the disciples were gathered in one place. Suddenly they heard the sound of a violent blast of wind. Can you imagine? You're sitting in a house together with your sisters and brothers and you're praying and you hear this sound and you think it is a hurricane or a storm coming up, but it's a wind from the Holy Spirit. Suddenly they heard the sound of a violent blast of a wind rushing into the house from out of the heavenly realm. I'm going to stop a little bit because the first time I had a supernatural experience, I told you guys several times here in here before, but I, I repeat myself on purpose. Um, 
that the Holy Spirit can come as a wind. He came to me as a wind when I was sitting in that hallway in that church where I didn't, I couldn't be in the church service. I think I was bound by something. So I was sitting in the hallway. I'd never experienced anything supernatural in my whole life. And I was actually quite angry, but I was also longing for Christ. So I was sitting there with an old usher, a man, and all of a sudden I felt this wind and I thought it was a physical wind. Yeah, probably the same thing as the, dis the disciples uh, were, were experiencing, maybe a little stronger. But I felt the wind and I remember I, I, I said to the usher, could you please turn the, the windows or some door that is open because it's, it's blowing in here. And he said that there is nothing that is open. And the moment he said that, that wind came into my body. It came into my blood system and it was rushing through my blood. And I believe something came out and something came in. The Holy Spirit came into me. And I was, I was a little scared in the first second. So I stood up and I said, what's going on with me? It's like somebody's changing my blood. That's how it felt to me. And I just fell on the floor and wept. And, and I received Jesus right there in the hallway. Same wind. Holy Spirit is a, is a wind, is a gentle breeze, is a fire, is many things. Is laughter, is crying, is a heavy peace that you, is so peaceful sometimes when the Holy Spirit comes that you can't move. Have you experienced that? You can't move. You just sit somewhere. Sometimes when I pray, I'm starting to sit on my couch and then I end on the floor. A lot because it's so heavy on me that I have to lay down flat on my face. The Holy Spirit is his presence. Is a sign. Is a scripture that said these signs shall follow those that believe. And it, it's also connected to that we should lay hands on sick and they will recover. But there is also signs of that God is present in your life. It's it's the peace, it's the joy, it's the safety, it's the gladness, clarity, revelation, the fire of God, and that wind. And also I can have like manifestations like shakings and goosebumps. And it's, it's all God, you know. But we don't have to seek it. We don't have to seek the manifestation. I don't believe in seeking it actually. It's like a bonus that just comes. It's a sign of that the Holy Spirit is in the room. The presence of God. Let's continue. The roar of the wind was so overpowering. It was all, all anyone could bear. So it was mighty. Then all at once... A pillar of fire appeared before their eyes. It separated into tongues of fire that engulfed each one of them. And I also experienced something similar. I went to a Bible school in Sweden. And uh, I was praying on that prayer school one day. It was so strong, anointing. And all of a sudden, I was taken out into a vision. Because first of all, I felt that was something on my head. Like it was a flame here. So I was constantly touching my head. I felt there was something blowing. And it felt like a fire over my head. True story. So I kept touching my head like that. But there was nothing there. And then God took me out into the spirit. And I saw a long field of acres, harvest that was endless, millions of people, I heard, millions of people. And I was shaking when I saw that vision. I'm telling you people, I was so drunk in the spirit that I couldn't talk to anybody after the class was over. 
I was so under the power that I went straight through the classroom, didn't talk to anybody, just spoke in tongues and went right over the street, just talking in the tongues, couldn't talk to anybody, came home to my house, laid on the floor for three hours. That was the power of God. And I know it had to do with, had to do with my, my calling, my, my future. God showed me the harvest. Um, yeah, let's continue. So these tongues, the, that fiery pillar was separating to many tongues that were placed over the disciples' head. They were all filled and equipped with the Holy Spirit and were inspired. He inspires us. He leads us to the truth, to speak in tongues, empowered by the Spirit to speak in languages they had never learned. And I also read some revival history from uh, the Azusa revival, for example, where uh, William Seymour's wife, the one that became his wife, I don't know if she was his wife then, but she became it. She couldn't play any instruments. And when the Holy Spirit fell on them, they could speak in many languages also there similar to the Pentecostal uh, day and she started to play on the piano and she could play perfectly she couldn't one note and she all of a sudden could play perfectly on that piano and she got six languages from the Holy Spirit spoken through tongues can you believe it it's so supernatural and the same thing happened to the disciples they were speaking in many, many different languages. You see, when we, when, we, when we start to speak in tongues, we maybe in the beginning get some few words and don't be, uh, you know, doubtful that this is not tongues. I'm just getting two, three words. Just speak them. It's a language. When you started to learn uh, another language, you didn't learn the whole language at once. You need you learned words, and then you learned sentences, and then you le learn more and more and more, and then you could speak it flowing after a long time. So when we use our tongues, we will get more words. Some of the tongues are languages in other places we don't know. I know people who have tongues that are speaking in French or in Arabic, or in Hebrew, many other languages that they can't speak. I know people from Africa who all of a sudden start to speak in Swedish, and they didn't know that it was Swedish, but it's the Holy Spirit. Um, now at that time, there were Jewish worshippers who had emigrated from many different lands to live in Jerus Jerusalem when the people of the city heard the roaring sound crowds came running to where it was coming from crowds came running I bet stunned over what was happening because each one could hear the disciple speaking in his in his or her own language Bewildered, they said to one another, aren't these all Galilees? So how is it that we hear them speak in our languages? We are northwestern, northeastern Irans, east central Turkey, uh, Elamites, and those from Mesopotamia, Judea, central Turkey, the coast area of the Black Sea, Asia, North Central, Southern Turkey, Egypt, Libyans who are neighbors of Siren, visitors from all over the Roman Empire. And all these languages were spoken through tongues. Can you believe it? Both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking of God's mighty wonders in our own dialects. So they didn't just say their language, they were speaking about God. 
because the tongues is a heavenly language is is a spiritual language that is connected to god and the enemy doesn't know what you're saying that's why you should speak in tongues a lot when you pray paul says it speak a lot in tongues you build up your inner man when you speak in tongues and you speak a a language you pray to god the enemy can't hear you when you speak in tongues it's a powerful language in the spirit that is building you and me up and on top of that when these people got these um, languages they were also saying through tongues uh, about god's mighty wonders so that everybody could knew that this was god that was hitting on that place that day. They all stood there dumbfounded and astonished, saying to one another, what is this phenomenon? But others poked fun at them and said, they're just drunk of, on, on new wine. Yeah, new wine for sure, but not that kind of wine. Peter stood up with the 11 apostles and shouted, to the crowd don't let god don't let the enemy take away your shout shout out the message of god shout when you are rejoicing don't be that little quiet voice express yourself with a shout many people have lost their shout they lost their skip in their step they lost their joy when they are praising god and everything becomes boring and religious and we need to get our shout back. We need to get our skip in our step back. And, and, and shout for, for the king of kings, the lord of lords that are living inside of us. Can you imagine? We belong to him. We're his daughters and his sons. So he was shouting, Peter, listen carefully, my fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. You need to clearly understand what's happening here. These people are not drunk like you think they are, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. This is the fulfillment of what's prophesied through the prophet Joel. Joel for God says, this is what I will do in the last days. And this is the last days. I will pour out my spirit on everybody. And cause your son and daughters to prophesy. So it's not only the prophets that are going to prophesy in the end time. All of us are going to prophesy. It doesn't mean that you are a prophet. But you have been given the anointing to prophesy. Prophetic gift is activated in you. And all of us are going to prophesy. That's what he says. And your young men will see visions. And your old men will experience dreams from God. The Holy Spirit will come upon all my servants. Men and women alike and they will prophesy. I will reveal starting signs and wonders in the sky above. And mighty miracles on the earth below. So don't be afraid of this world situation. Read the word of God. This is, this is the news. This is the truth. Not what they are saying. Live in the spirit. That's exciting. We are ex going to go into a time of revival. I 100% believe it. A mighty revival. A fire that's going to burn from nation to nation all over this planet and then we are going to see mighty signs and wonders jesus said you're going to do more signs and wonders than i did different things bigger things so it's going to be poured out in these last days mighty signs and wonders that's why we need faith and we need to stand on the word of god and be close to the holy spirit so we walk by faith and are living in expectation. That's a miracle mentality. You're living in expectation. What is God going to do today? When I pray and I serve 
and I'm nice to people, I apologize, I forgive people, I live close to the Holy Spirit, I live in conviction in my heart, and I am so, when I live like that, every day I'm so excited to see what God is up to. Every day it's like, what is he going to do today? What, what is your plan, Father God, today? I know you got something, something, something. And I'm going to connect with people. You're going to give me some revelation. You're going to speak to me. I'm going to just have a blessed day or you're going to lead me because I'm open to be led. I told you hundreds of times, I'm a missionary wherever I am. Yes, I have callings to nations, but I'm here in Norway right now. So I'm a missionary here. Bloom where you're planted. Don't sit in your apartment and wait for coming to another nation because you called there. No, you called here right now since you're here. There are people everywhere. Touch people's lives wherever you are. Your street, your coffee place, your gym, your neighbors, your area. You come in contact with people every day and be that light, be that light from heaven and think like a missionary in, and, and but, but be, be yourself. Many times God used my personality to come in contact with people because I'm, I'm normal. You know, I'm not a strange Christian. Uh, sorry to use that term, but some Christians, they are doing a lot of strange things that that is so strange and so wicked that people in the world they don't want to be like that they don't want to be strange but be yourself be a friend be normal be kind to people pray for people even if they're not saved don't try to you know force them to believe in jesus before you pray for them meet people's needs then when you come somewhere and people have a need, you're there to meet their needs. You're there as an am ambassador for Christ. Yeah, that's what I think every day when I meet people and they start to say that they're sick, they have some problems, instantly it kicks in in me. Whoa, I need to pray. And I offer them my prayers and they always says yes. And they're shocked. They don't. They didn't count on that there will come a woman into a, a coffee shop, a, a regular shop or somewhere um, that is not a church. And then she, she offers them a prayer, you know. I do it in a very natural, cool way. And it works every time. Because I build up trust to these people. They see that I'm normal, you know. Uh, I'm like them, but I'm not like them, you know what I'm saying? So I sit and I just talk with them. I'm friendly, I'm funny, you know, and then and then I win their trust. And then I, I can say something led by the Holy Spirit. That's the point. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows best. So he's going to lead our way of speaking, our way of being, Lead us to people and serve with the, with the Holy Spirit every day. Serve on that heavenly wave that God has for you. Um, where was I? Yeah, the Holy Spirit will come upon all my servants. Um, I will reveal yeah, wonders and, and, and mighty signs. Blood and fire and pillars of clouds will appear, for the sun will be turned dark and the moon blood red before that great and awesome appearance of the day of the Lord. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. What a mercy. What a mercy. So if Hitler, before he died, Ha, would have said Jesus save me forgive my sins instantly he would have been taken into the heavens even if he had done all that terrible terrible things God will in his mercy save him for eternity because his heart was repenting 
Ja, what a grace. Peter continued. People of Israel, listen to the facts. Jesus the victorious was a man on a divine mission whose authority was clearly proven. For you know how God performed many powerful miracle signs and wonders through him. This man, destiny, man's destiny was prearranged. For God knew that Jesus would be handed over to you to be crucified and that you would execute him on a cross by the hands of lawless men. Yet it was all a part of his predetermined plan. God destroyed the cords of death and raised him up because it was impossible for death's power to hold him in prisoner. This is the very thing David prophesied about him. I continually see the Lord in front of me. He is at my right hand and I'm never shaken. No wonder my heart is glad and my glory celebrates. My mouth is filled with his praises. When you praise God, when you live in worship, your mouth is filled with his praises. You wake up smiling. You wake up thanking God because you're alive, because he lives inside of you. You're grateful. Your mouth is filled with praises. And I have hope that my body will live. Because you will not leave my soul among the dead, David said. Nor will you allow your sacred one to experience decay. For you have revealed to me the part ways to life. And seeing your face fills me with ephonia. My fellow Jews, I can tell you there is no doubt that our noted patriarch has both died and been buried in his tomb, which remains to this day. So you can see that he was not referring to himself with those words, but as a prophet, he knew God's faithful promise made with God's unbreakable oath, that one of his descendants would take his throne. So when peering into the future, David prophesied, of the Messiah's resurrection. And God revealed to him that Messiah would not be abandoned to the realm of death, nor, nor would his body experience decay. Can't you see it? God has resurrected Jesus, and we all have seen him, Peter said. Then God exalted him to his right hand upon the throne of highest honor, and the Father gave him the authority to send the promised Holy Spirit, which is being poured out up on us today. This is what you're seeing and hearing. Wow. I think I'm going to stop there. It says also in the Bible, those who are the children of God, they are the ones who are led by the Holy Spirit. I said many times this, people go to church, think they are saved. I believe that there are many people in the church who are not saved. Absolutely. They're not connected with their heart. They haven't surrendered to Jesus Christ fully. They believe in the Bible, but their hearts is not turned to him. They haven't let go of the old life. They haven't surrendered and turned away from their wicked ways. They live the same way and then they go to church. It's religious. And they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God, the Bible says. It's not my judgment. It's, it's, it's in the Bible, you know. Because you, you, you can't be a car just by going and standing in a garage. You're still a human being. You can't be a saved person just by standing or going to the church every Sunday. I know people who have went to church for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. They still not get it, you know. They're still disconnected. For many of them, it's a social club. It's a Christian social club. They meet their friends. You know, it's something you can do together. You sing some worship songs. 
and and you even take notes from the the preacher bible says that there is a is a verse like this you honor me with your lips but your hearts are far away from me so i'm asking you today my precious friend to to check your heart like david did search my heart he said see if there is any wickedness in me lead me to the right path see if there's anything that is blinded in me that i can't see that i so i'm certain that i'm not deceived so i know that i i live in your salvation we all have to do that from time to time it's so easy to be deceived and to come into this really religious pattern in our lives let jesus have your whole heart surrender everything in your life and let go let go and let the holy spirit fill you and take over your life and start living this exciting life i was preaching the other day and i said to the people there before i gave my life totally i had this struggle because i didn't want to be a mediocre christian i could rather be out in the world do some fun there I don't want to live like a mediocre Christian. I want to live a burning, wholehearted life with Christ. I want to see miracles, signs and wonders. Won't you? I want to see the power manifested through my life. I want to see people around me that are sick recover. I want to see dead people be raised from the grave. I want to see all my friends be saved, my family members. I want to see that my prayers are being answered on this planet. And I want to experience the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to live that supernatural life. I, I'm not satisfied living like a boring, normal, mediocre Christian life. It's not for me. I need to live a full life. But then you have to give it fully. Everything. Let go of everything. Every string. Every attachment. Every addiction. Everything that's bounding, binding you and keeping you away from receiving all that God has for you. Yeah? This was my word. Live in the spirit. When you come into this anointing, the yokes are going to break in your life. Because that anointing breaks yokes over our lives and other people's lives. It's powerful stuff. It's holy and it's... It's so exciting to live with God. I will never change my life to another life. I live like a nun. I say that to my friends. They laugh at me. I live basically in prayer. I pray a lot every day. I have to. You see, if I don't have that fellowship and I do it out of love because I'm, I'm addicted to Jesus. I love Jesus. I'm in love with him. And he's in love with me. And, and you know, he's my, my great love in this life. If I, if, I, if I am with friends a lot and I, I can't have that strong prayer life for some, some days, I feel that it's almost like I'm disconnected. I know I am connected, but I, I'm so spoiled in the spirit now to hear from God every day and to live that strong powerful life in the spirit where i'm led constantly led all the time it's not what i plan it's just i'm le being led by the holy spirit it's so exciting and sometimes i see it after wow that was the holy spirit i didn't plan that i didn't plan to go there bam and sometimes it's it's things that i have planned by myself that i feel peace about going to places and I can see that that whole journey was designed by heaven. It was not only a vacation, but it was a missionary journey. So tune in to the Holy Spirit and live in the Spirit. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Learn to know His voice and His ways in your life. And, and you see, the Bible says that out of your belly shall flow liver, rivers of living water. It should come out of you every day. Never stop praising God. And it will just increase in your life. 
Have an awesome day. It's so hot there. I'm going to go out. Today I'm going to meet my precious mother. She's in the nursery home in this little town where I am now. I love my mother. She used to be a great prayer warrior. I'm going to go and give her some love and some hugs and maybe some ice cream. Have an awesome day, my friends. I speak to you soon, okay? God bless you. I love you. Bye.